for making a film like this. It's what we need right now. Right. Um, the physical comedy and the stunt, Sandra, you're, you're incredible. Break down this scene for me here. Ooh. Oh my gosh, uh, panic, absolute panic. It was, we had to dive in and swim through this cave to get to the other side. And the cave was about the length of this room and we would get halfway through and I would start panicking. And Channing is just pushing, that's literally him pushing me through the middle part of the cave because he knew I was starting to panic. Oh my. And Channing's like a very good swimmer. He's, he's well, a great, right? no, I'm a yeah. great I'm swimmer, but I had a yeah. wetsuit that was keeping me buoyant and I mean, keeping me warm, but it was lifting me up to the top so I couldn't stay underneath. And I mean, he just knew, he knew every time, but he instinctually is that guy. Yeah. He, when he is in, the, in just any situation, his eyes are on everyone else as well, just making sure. But that's that. We are in the middle of the cave, and I'm panicking. I would have panicked too. I yeah. got a little anxiety yeah. watching yeah. it. Um, we all love a little Brad Pitt, you guys. What a fun little addition yeah. here. A uh, little little Brad Pitt. <laughs> little Brad. Little Brad. Yeah, LBP. Little, little Brad Pitt. I yeah. heard that he was like the 40th choice or something. <laughs> Eighth. I mean, look, you. It's you know, there's a lot of great talent in this town. Um, a lot of people wanted to do this film. Yeah. You gotta, you know, but I mean, he's, he's just dying off. You gotta throw him a no, bone. I mean, you know? like, look, I want him to succeed. I want him to be able to continue working, and um, I want people to see him in a different light. That isn't, you know, he's not leaving. He's just arriving. So mm. we we tailor made. No, it, it, he he came he came with his game. He mm. he buffed up for this because we I had just done Bullet Train on his film, and when he arrived, I'm like, what happened? Like he said, I, he he bulked up for it. He needed all these stunts. He was there for four days and just just brought it. And just rained the whole time he was there? Yeah, I think. it did. It was all like, things, it yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah. beautiful weather all and the time. And we only had we him for those days, so we panicked. We were in, in a bit of a panic. You were and like, please stop, stop the rain for yeah. Brad Pitt. Uh, but, and oddly it did. That's the power <laughs> of Brad Pitt. Um, <laughs> And it's the hairstylist that connected this, correct? Janine, yes. Janine. Janine, yes. Okay, so does Janine get a cut of these films? I mean, <laughs> she, she actually should. It's a good I question. mean, agents got a cut of the deal when they should actually have cut her into the deal. Yeah. But I took care of Janine. I mean, yeah. Janine and I have known each other since we were babies in this business. So we, she, she's not leaving because I know too much, and I'm not leaving her side because she knows too much. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fruitful friendship, and Brad and I will take care of Janine until her last day on the planet. A lucky lady. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, were you a, as big of a fan of Sandra's as I was growing up? Yes. What was the movie for you that was like, oh my God, this woman's incredible? I mean, I, I'm like one of my, the, the first film I saw in the cinema reviews was Miss Congeniality. I remember seeing it. I remember going. Um, I was saying to somebody earlier, like, I, you know, on Potter, I obviously worked with lots of extraordinary actors, but like, I didn't know who any of them were because I was a small child and I hadn't grown up watching like the prime of Miss Jean Brody or, or you know or like Richard or the, uh, Man Called Horse so I was like uh, but Sandra's movies like I did grow up watching so it was very it was uh, slightly intimidating at first to be working with her but luckily she's lovely and ma very quickly made it easy to be less intimidated at least because um, I'm a very intimidating kind of well, person well you're not right? but yeah. you're but you're you, you what? are like you're, My... your aura and the person you have been in the industry you know it's very it's really cool so I was like very freaked out when I was meeting you first what and then but very quickly it became like easy and she's so like, funny it's, like, it's the same exact thing like he gets on set and everyone just sort of stood up and everyone became a little bit more professional and they're like Daniel's here which is, that's insane. But, um, but yeah, so I was a very, very big fan, and it was very cool to work with her. Oh, I love it. Do Are your kids Harry Potter fans? Did they know you were working with Harry Potter? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, there was there was a rule with my son. Would, that day we were walking down the beach, and we saw you guys there. Like, There's a rule my son and I have. Like, I'm allowed to hold his hand as long as no one that we don't know is not watching. I'm allowed to hold his hand as long as people we don't know are not watching. That's correct. Okay. Um, so we were walking down. I was holding his hand, and I saw him clock Daniel. And I was like, I know, I know I have to drop the hand, but I'm not going to drop the hand until we get a certain point because Daniel can't see you. And like, like within like two sand granules, he was like, mm. And then we walked by Daniel, and he sort of puffed up a little bit. He's like, hi, hi, how are you doing? I'm like, who are you right now? It's like, so but it, there, there's just, <clears throat> as frustrating as it is for, for Daniel, I'm sure, um, having that legacy to carry, but, you know, having to work your way out of it as an adult. Mm. You know, my whole family is is our huge Harry, Harry Potter. He's, I, I really only asked one person for an autograph, and it was Daniel for my sister for her birthday. 
I'm very That's fatty. an honor. It is. It absolutely oh, yeah. is. So it's on her shrine. Of yeah, I did. I, yeah, me and, me and Patrick Stewart. I'm very, yeah, very happy about that. and Patrick Stewart. Uh, to wrap this up, you guys, the leeches scene. Mm -hmm. It will go down in film history. The annals of history. Oh. <laughs> Get it? Well, you might not until you see it, but the annals <laughs> of history. Yeah. Sandra, yes. uh, your monologue to Channing Tatum's <laughs> Derrier. <laughs> so um, good. I mean... I didn't really that? speak to the back. No, I spoke, spoke to only the to the front. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's in my contract. <laughs> I'm a front, full, full frontal speaker. It was amazing. <laughs> you nailed it. Um, was it true that it was his second day on set? Yes, it was. Yeah, second day on set. Yes. And he handled it like a pro. He, he's Magic Mike. If Magic Mike can't handle a sock puppet in my face and just taking it like a champ, then, like, Ch Channing Tatum can handle just about anything. That is nothing for him. I mean, he was very cool, but he worked really hard for that. He, he worked out. He was, he was, oh, my God. We would get up in the morning. He would, we would be coming out of the, the, the ocean, you know, at the crack of dawn. He, he worked really hard to make sure that that scene was everything the public would want it to be. No need to see Magic Mike 3, everybody. No, you gotta go see Magic oh, yeah. Mike 3. Go see that too. Go see it's gonna work really hard on it. Please, go see it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>